This tutorial will demonstrate two ways to set up materials in Blender. The first using properties and the second using nodes. Before we begin, we need to switch the render mode from solid to material preview. Changing render modes is necessary to see materials. The most simple way to set up a material in Blender is by way of material properties. Tap the red checkered circle located at the bottom of the properties panel to open material properties. Then select new. The object will have a default grayish material already applied. We can see this material titled material.001 in the material index. To rename this material, click into the name box. We can then change the material to our liking by adjusting the settings under the surface section. Scroll down to see all the adjustment options. To adjust the base color, simply left click the box to bring up the color wheel. We can also adjust elements like roughness and metallic effect. It's important to note that materials will not render in game engines exactly as they appear in Blender. This is especially true for materials that interact with the environment, like transparencies or mirrors. In these scenarios, it's best to recreate the material directly in the game engine. Materials that do not rely on environmental interactions, those that are matte and opaque, can be baked onto 3D objects and maintain their intended effect. This will be covered in the next tutorial. The second way to create a material is by using nodes. To access the nodes, we need to enter the shading viewport. Select the shading tab at the top of the window. The viewport is divided into four main windows. Here is the viewport where you can see the object and navigate around the scene on the left, there is file access where we can download photo textures. Underneath, we have an image preview and basic editor window. And beside this, we have the nodes editor. Nodes work similar to layers in Photoshop in that each layer or node will affect the composition in a different way. We can create unique materials and textures by adding and connecting multiple nodes. To get started, we need to create a new material. To do this, tap the new material icon in the nodes editor. Note the dot 001 that gets added to the title. This indicates that we are working with new material data. To see the old material, tap the browse material dropdown. Rename this new material to keep things organized. Now let's focus on the nodes editor. Note the appearance of the node setup. It consists of a principled BSDF shader, a connector, and a material output. The principled BSDF node is the same as the shader section that we just learned about in the material properties panel. The material output is the main output. Any node that is to contribute to the final material must be connected to this node in some way. The dots on the left side of the nodes are the inputs, and the dots on the right side are the outputs. It should be noted that nodes run from left to right. To move a node, click and drag it, or select it and press G to move it. To disconnect a node, click and drag the input side of the connection and drop it in an open space. We can also hold control and right click hold and drag across the connection to break it. To connect a node, left click on the output and drag it to the desired input. To delete a node, select it, right click, and navigate to delete. Or for the shortcut, tap the X key while the node is selected. 
add nodes through the add menu or hover your cursor in the nodes editor and use shift a for the shortcut. This brings up the nodes menu. I'll add the principled BSDF back in. It's located under the shaders. There are a lot of nodes in each subcategory, but we will focus on textures and converters from this point on. To generate a texture, open the Nodes menu and add a texture node. I'm going to select the Noise Texture and then left click to place it. Next, we need to connect the new node. The Noise node has a factor and a color output. We can experiment with these connections to create different effects. Generally, factor outputs are associated with the texture and the color outputs are associated with changing the hue. When I connect the factor output to the subsurface input, it creates a texture using the base color. If I attach the color output to the base color input, it alters the color. We can add multiple textures to create unique outputs. I'll add a Voronoi texture to demonstrate. The Voronoi texture has three outputs that can be connected to the five inputs of the noise node. So there are multiple combinations to try, some of which will produce similar output results and others very different. We can also bypass the noise node altogether and connect the Voronoi node directly to the principled BSDF. To experiment with color, we can add the color ramp converter. Bring up the nodes menu and select the converter submenu. Then select the color ramp. Hover the node over the connector leading to the base color of the principled BSDF and left click to place it. Next click on an arrow to select it and then click on the color box to bring up a color wheel. To add more colors, tap the plus icon. Once your texture is created, you can apply it to other objects. Select the new object you wish to apply it to. Then click the Browse Materials drop-down and select the material you just created. Aside from generating our own textures, Blender allows us to import external image files. In this next example, we will import a brick texture and attach it to an object. But before we do this, we need to learn about UV unwrapping. UV unwrapping is the process of flattening a 3D object onto a 2D surface. This is done by marking seams or cut lines. The process is similar to deconstructing a cardboard box from its folded 3D form into a flat 2D form. UV unwrapping can generally be skipped for Blender's default shapes, but it is required for applying textures to complicated meshes. If we were to skip this step with a complex mesh, the imported image texture would become distorted. First, we will add the imported image to the object. Enter the shading window and add an image texture node. This can be found in the texture subcategory. Then connect the color output to the base color input on the principled BSDF. To add an image file, Tap the open icon on the image texture node and select your image file. Then click open image. Note the appearance of the brick texture. 
It's stretched and distorted because we haven't UV unwrapped the model. There is a manual way to unwrap a mesh, but for a beginner, it's much simpler to use the auto unwrap features in Blender. For this demo, we will use the Smart UV Project function. Select the mesh and enter the UV editing window. The left side of the workspace shows how the mesh is currently unwrapped in its default form. This is called the UV map. The right side of the workspace is an edit mode window. Be sure to scroll through the top bar to switch into the material render mode. To Smart UV project the mesh, expand the UV tab in the edit mode window and select Smart UV project, then click OK. We can see how the UV map has changed and how the brick pattern realigns and is no longer stretched. We should also note that the UV map on the left can be edited using the move tools or the move shortcuts. This allows us to reposition how the texture sits on the object. To review these shortcuts, please visit the edit mode tutorial. Another texturing option is to paint directly onto the model. We can do this by adding a new image texture node in the nodes editor and tapping new to create a new image. Connect the color output to the base color input of the principled BSDF. With the model and image texture nodes selected, navigate to the texture paint workspace. Texture Paint allows us to paint directly on the UV map or the actual 3D object. Make sure the render mode is set to Material Preview. Then we can select a color from the color wheel and adjust the radius to our liking. To begin painting, left click on either the texture map or the object like so. In the next tutorial, we will learn how to bake on textures and export a 3D model.